It's time for the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX at WMIXSports.com. Recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the premier radio feature programs in the state, you're about to discover the very best mix of interviews, discussion, and sports talk on the dial. Live from the studios of WMIX, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. Welcome in to Saturday Sports Show. A couple minutes late, but we've got on the air. There's all kinds of things going on here at the studio today and around the King City of Mount Vernon. Denny Swinski here with Mike Richardson, Jeff Crow, Chris Hugo. It's a crowded studio here today. We're all here doing various assorted jobs and lists of things to do here around the station as well. Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Those of you know... Um, I'm the Kentucky fan of the bunch. Mike is the UCLA fan of the bunch, so we're very, how should we say this, fragile this morning. My team wasn't even in the tournament. Mike's team got beat by an ex-coach of mine. So we're kind of fragile this morning here to start with, aren't we, Mike? That's a good adjective. I think a very good adjective right there. Yeah, it's been a productive season. Got it on? There we go. Got fragile. Can't even turn the mic on. Yeah, that's how fragile it has been, that's for sure. Uh, productive season on UCLA part as far as the regular season goes, but just uh, no urgency last night in that game whatsoever. And uh, we were talking just right before we came on the air. Boy, my bracket looks so, so pretty after Friday and Friday night. But, boy, what a what a disaster with the markings from last night. And, uh, yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been interesting so far the first two days and nights of the tournament. and Now a lot of people, teams are out. Uh, they've got to look at next year, the teams that are still in. Uh, they got a lot of rooting interest left. Illinois is one of those that is that is still in. Of course, in college, we got to go right out of the gate. We'll have the head coach on later in the show. The Ren Lake College Warriors men's basketball team has advanced to the national championship game in Danville tonight. That is an accomplishment, Mike. That's one of those that you don't get to talk about a lot. They get to take on a team that knocked them out last year, but, boy, Randy House has done a great job at Ren Lake. We're going to have him on the show here in the second hour. Well, they've been a very fun team to watch, and early on, naturally, with the Woodlawn connection with Bronson and Dawson Verhines, I uh, had a chance to know a little bit more about the rest of the team, and you knew when a couple of kids came back and basically a, a whole new lineup uh, with freshmen in, Uh, when they bought into the system and at that level when you're able to play 10 11 people and you have fresh legs in ball games randy house's goal has been just to absolutely try to wear people down and wear them out and that's been a a formula that's worked very very well for them this year Uh, they went through the regular season only three losses on the year Uh, what a great year they put together and then get in this championship run now in the JUCO ranks has mm-hmm. just been unprecedented and they're going to cap that off by a championship game here tonight uh, just couldn't ask for anything more from the coaching staff and a, a group of young men that really dedicated themselves this season uh, to this goal because now they're actually starting to come out of the woodwork talking about that was one of their goals this year they knew they were going to be talented it was just if they could put the work and the extra time into it and to see this results, uh, that's phenomenal here for the area. And they'll play tonight for that Division Two JUCO Championship against Moraine Valley, a team that beat them out last year in this exact same tournament. Before we get to that, though, very busy schedule day here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's a baseball, basketball, softball variety. We're going to start out with Tim Holloway, of course, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams, off a loss that tried yesterday, a doubleheader today against Mattoon, followed, of course, by Mount Vernon and Lady Rams softball coach, Lance Bolt, who will be on at 8.30 to talk about softball this week. Lady Rams are able to get a game or two in this week. Then, of course, we'll go start going around. Future opponents of the Rams next week in baseball. The Benton Rangers, Brett Blondie, will join us, followed by Tim Kraft, head coach of the Duke Coin Indians. At 9.05 will be Weber Township softball coach Greg Alvis at 9.15. The aforementioned Randy House will join us, talk about his team's game tonight in that national championship contest in Danville. And at 9.30, we will have on Mr. Dave Severn. You've heard his commercials around here for All Stars and Stitches. He's not going to join us to talk about his business. He's going to talk about the Kiwanis Lions Club All-Star Game next week at 
Ren Lake College. This has been an ongoing tradition. It used to be in the summer. They moved it a little closer, moved it up to into March. So it's a little closer to basketball season being over. And they're going to have that game next Friday night. We're going to have Dave Severn on talk about the history of that, that game, what it fundraises money for, and the players that are going to be involved and everything else for you around 930. We'll also have our WMI Sports social media question of the week. That will be coming up in a little while. And we'll ask that. We'll have that posted on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMI Sports. You can also follow us on Twitter. At WMI Sports, we'll have stuff on there today. But first thing well, we got to do is take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk, of course, with Mount Vernon head baseball coach Tim Holloway. His team has a doubleheader today later on right here on AM 940 and WMIXports.com against Matt Toon. You're listening to the Saturday Sports Show here on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. What do you look for in a full-size pickup? Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer, Ford Square, Mount Vernon. Here are some hard facts. The 2013 Ford F-150 can tow a heavier trailer and haul more cargo than any of its competitors, and it's engineered and tested to withstand more punishment. The F-150 has built Ford tough to come through with the capability you expect in this full-size pickup from Ford day in and day out. Right now, you can save $4,500 on a 2013 Ford F-150 Crew Cab 4x4 with the new EcoBoost engine when you finance through Ford Motor Credit. That includes three payments on us. Come see any of our sales associates today and drive away in a Ford F-Series or any vehicle at Ford Square, Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, or log on to FordSquare.com. Hi, I'm Bria Ashby with Community First Bank. It's always my goal to make the transition to Community First Bank as easy as possible for our customers. Our handy switch kit helps in doing just that. Whether it's direct deposit, auto transfers, or online banking, I'm here to help. Come see me at our 42nd Street location to open your account today and let me remind you how banking should be. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Trout Gymnasium. I mean, the studios at WMIX. Every time I hear that song, I think of Trout. Because I think of the orphanage jumping up and down. I'm sorry. I don't know that's going to rub people the wrong way. But that's the first thing I think of when I hear that song all these years. Speaking of rubbing it on the right way, we're going to have baseball on the day with Mount Vernon and Matt Toon and Doubleheader. Joining us now, the head coach in Mount Vernon Rams, Tim Holloway. And coach, a lesson learned this week, I guess, would be the best way to put it when you're playing the likes of Waterloo and Triad as far as baseball goes. Well, you know, they're good programs. Triad got third place in state last year. Waterloo, I believe, third the year before or fourth. So, I mean, they're, they're some of the league teams around here and maybe in the state. But uh, we played pretty well yesterday. We came up on the short end of it. And, uh, you know, we had a, had a good five innings and unfortunately didn't finish the deal on Wednesday. But, uh, you know, you can be a loser or learner. Hopefully we learn from it and uh, get ready to go today. But you know, learning from it a lot is that the case is you played a very good game against Waterloo for five innings. And, of course, yesterday a close one had try at a tough place to play. So it seems to me that the, the team is right there on the cusp of getting to where you want it to be by the time postseason comes around. Well, we got a long way to go, but I, I love to play good competition. I, especially, I love to play good competition early, and uh, it's good for our guys to – get out there it, the little things really count in those games you know those are pretty solid teams uh try as a load let me tell you i mm-hmm. one through nine uh i was impressed with their hitters and they made every play we put the ball in play uh, pitch very well defense was great but um you know we're going to have to do 
all the little things right to be right there with those teams when the time comes. You brought up a good point about putting the ball in play, and I think that's one thing I've noticed in the games I've been at this year is the fact that your team has had an ability in all these games so far, top to bottom in the order, to have good at-bats. How important is that in a high school level, to have such good at quality at-bats? It may not be a hit all the time, but such good quality at-bats, especially at the high school level. Oh, it's been a it's been a real big factor for us. You know, even if you don't get a hit, and sometimes you're going to hit right at them like yesterday, but we ask them to do one thing to play. That's have a quality of bat, and, and that can be a lot of different things. Moving a guy over, drawing a walk, hit by pitch, good and deep in account, hitting the ball hard on the line or hard on the ground. So a lot of good things. Getting a bunt down can be a quality of bat. So I think the kids are buying into that. And uh, so far, we've had some guys that have shown the ability to do that. We we asked them just put it in play, don't strike out, and especially don't strike out looking because uh, you're not going to give yourself a chance doing that. One of the things about the field at Brennan Klein Field and everything is you get a lot of games in. You haven't missed a game yet. You'll get two in this afternoon. How important is that early on to get in all these games like you are compared to other teams who've had rainouts and who are just now opening up their schedule here in the last couple of days? I think it's important for us because our conference season starts next week. And some other conference may not play that early. I'm not sure. But I think it's important. We're still figuring out some things. We have some guys back. We also have some new guys, and they're in different spots. And we're trying to figure out who's going to fit in in what situation. And, and our best. we had a good defensive lineup out there yesterday. We've got a few options. So it's a good way for the coaches to see who can throw strikes, who can play where. Uh, who's going to fit in what position, and and those things are important going into that first conference game. That first game, of course, before we get to conference, you have several games before, a very busy stretch here now. You played one yesterday, you're going to play two today, then you're going to have Monday through Friday next week. As a coach and a staff at this level, the difficulty, how hard is it to schedule starters and things like that to get the guys on a rotation and a schedule of consistent routine out there on the hill? Well, it's, you know, you always have a plan, and it, it, a lot of times it doesn't end up that way. Things change, but we always have a plan, have an idea who's in relief that day, who's starting the next day, this and that, long relief, short relief, but it, it just changes day to day with the weather, how many innings guys go, and, and such. So, um, you know, Brock's cruising along the other day, and uh, things change real quick, and uh, you just don't know what's going to happen, so... It is. It's tough. You, at least we have the opportunity to have a plan. Some some teams only have two or three guys they can count on. So we're fortunate in that aspect. Mattoon today in a double header. Last year was two pretty good ball games up at Mattoon. This year you get them at home. What do you expect out of Mattoon today? Do you know anything about them this early in the ball game? Well, they're always good. You know, I I know they've got some guys back, and I remember several years ago, two years ago, maybe maybe even three. It seemed like their uh, their eighth grade group had won the state undefeated. I could be wrong on that, but it, regardless, you know, for all the years I've played and coached against them, they're always solid, and they do a good job of having a real good approach to the plate, it's similar to the Waterloo Triad teams. That they'll stay back. You're not going to fool them. You know, there's some teams where we can pitch the weakness and that type of thing, but I, I consider most of their guys usually mixed hitters, where you've got to just keep them off balance and locate and make plays. So, you know, that's that's one aspect that you always seem from to see from them. They also are solid fundamentally. They they do a good job bunting and, and that type of thing. So it'll be another good challenge for us. I know I'm real excited to get back on the field. I hope the kids are. I'm sure they are. Uh, we want to get back out there. And getting back out there at 1 o'clock today in the double hair, we want everybody to come out. And then next week, as you mentioned, you got a conference game with Altoff at home on Thursday, but you throw in a Benton, Effingham, Montini, and Ducoy in the mix. I mean, this is the way it should be. And at the Mount Vernon at 3A, 2A level, go out and play the best you can be as far as 1A, 2A, and 3A schools go. Oh, definitely. I, that's To me, that gets me excited. I've always liked to play good competition. You know, we want to play the best. That's why... We put several years ago Waterloo and try it in this week. We weren't they weren't on our schedule. Uh, you know, we try to go get the Effingham, the best three A's and the best two A's and that's Ducoin and Ben and the Harrisburgs and whoever is, is out there that, that's a good program, we like to play them. So um, you know, I I think you can be good or you can be an imposter. You know, you can schedule 
schedule weak teams and win a lot of games, but that doesn't do much for me. Doesn't do much, and again, next week you'll have five games next week for the next week. Of course, conference starts kicking in, and Marion Carbondale the week after that. Is Have you gotten a sense from anybody else talking coaching-wise as far as the South 7 goes this year, or is it still relatively too young right now to know in the season how good everybody in the South 7 is going to be? I think the South 7 is going to be up this year. I, I really do. I think there's some solid uh, pitching out there. I know uh, some, some certain teams have some good number one, so uh, things are going to be up, and in general, I think things are up. Mississippi Valley, those those teams are solid. They're going to be right there. Uh, the Southwestern Conference, talking about one of the best talented teams, best talented groups as a whole. They've seen, you know, and that's saying something there. So, a lot of Division One kids. We saw one or two yesterday uh, on our schedule. A lot of good teams, and it's going to be a good, challenging uh, schedule. Okay. Your challenge in time, of course, the doubleheader today and all the games we do. Your challenge today is our final question, our WMI Sports social media question of the week. I know you got baseball in the mind. MLB starts a week from the, tomorrow. But our question this week is, who is your pick to win the NCAA tournament? You're not going to believe this, but I, did, I didn't even fill out a bracket, guys. I've been busy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've watched one game – Front of at least start to finish. Now, a former coach of mine, guy recruited me at SIU. He's the head coach of South Dakota State. Mm-hmm. A real good man and uh, was a, a good influence. And I, I watched his teams. I always followed him because I thought he, he was a heck of a coach. So that was the game I've seen. I, I caught a little bit of the Harvard game, but uh, who knows? It's It's been great. Florida Gulf Coast last night was awesome. I watched a little bit of that. Uh, outstanding game. So it's always fun. Just don't always, have a team, guys. No team. Well, it's always fun. We'll see you here in about three and a half, four hours. We'll come out to Brennan Klein Field and get a doubleheader in today and hopefully get a couple of Rams victories. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's Tim Holloway, head coach of the Mountain Vernon Rams. And, Mike, it's that time of year. If it's dry, if it can go and you can get as many games as possible, these high school teams are going to do what they can, especially today. Well, you have to. I mean, the season is just so short. I mean, the calendar is staring you in the face. So. <laughs> It's just one of those things. You have to find some good weather, and eventually we're going to have it. But you just can't pass up any opportunity. It might be 40 degrees today. Uh, hopefully the wind won't be as bad, but, uh, you know, an opportunity to play, you got to try it. Still won't be as bad as the other day. Still thawing from the other day. as was the Saturday Sports Show. We need to take a break. Of course, Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah. On the other side of the break, the Mount Vernon Lady Rams softball coach Lance Bolt will join us here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. You'll notice right away that Second Chance Auto doesn't depend on fancy sales gimmicks. Instead, you'll only find honest deals with no credit checks and instant approval. Take your income tax rebate and use it on the great quality used vehicle you really want. Cars, trucks, minivans, along with small, mid-size, and full-size SUVs. Most priced under $10,000 with 3-month or 3,000-mile warranty. Family-owned for over 32 years. Serving the families in our region. Located on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois proudly welcomes Dr. Brian Steinke to their medical staff. Dr. Steinke earned his medical degree at the University of Illinois in Chicago and has degrees in anatomy and physiology from UC Berkeley, and he brings prestigious credentials to the center. Dr. Steinke is a gifted physician and contributor to orthopedic textbooks. Call 618-242-3778 or visit their informative website at orthocenter-si.com. I'm Eddie Robbins, Dave Bowers. We'll look at your next round weather. Rather cloudy today, a high 52. Tonight, cloudy, chilly, a cold rain much of the time. Wet snow mixing in late, a low of 35. And Sunday, that cold rain mixed with wet snow becoming all wet snow. And a slushy 2 to 4 inches expected through the evening. Temperatures will hold in the middle 30s. And then Monday, cloudy, windy, and cold with a few flurries and a high 37. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show. Denny Zorinski with Jeff Crow, Mike Richardson, Chris Hugo alongside here on the on Broadway here at the WMIX Studios. Rams baseball later this afternoon. We'll talk more about that later. But joining us now, talk a little Lady Rams softball is the head coach of the Lady Rams, Lance Bolt. Coach, how are you this morning? 
Hey, guys. Doing okay. How are you guys? I'm doing well. And the thing i got to think of here with the Lady Rams right now, it seems to me that you're kind of out on this corner with a, a cardboard sign that says, we'll, we'll play, need a game, call me. Is that kind of what's going on here with Lady Rams softball lately? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we had the tournament here at home that got canceled on Monday. Uh, I mean, it, what we get, like four or five inches of rain, yeah. there's just no way we'd get that in. And then uh, we were able to go to the coin yesterday and play. And uh, we've added we've added a Walton Bill game uh, here in a few days. So we're adding some games, um, added some JV tournaments here that's coming up. But, um, yeah, we're just we're looking to play any chance we get. I, I look at it this way, is the fact that w- when you look at your team and, and as you get in a situation where you've got your schedule made coming into your first year as coach and you look at this and you get your schedule done and teams start canceling on you, it, it cannot be easy, can it, to go out and find games, find teams to play at this short a time, can it? Oh, no. I mean, you know, having McLeansboro and, and Cobden cancel this past week, that hurt us a little bit. Um we we got to play. We got to see where we're at. We just haven't had much of an opportunity, uh, and it's kind of unfortunate for the girls because you know it's not fair to them. But um, you know we've been actually we've been on our field, you know, on, on the full field one time, uh, and and that's just you know that's not enough. Uh, we do a lot of simulated things inside or maybe out at the football field or maybe on, in the outfield grass here at Lincoln Park, but. You know, we got to get on the field, and we, that was definitely evident yesterday with what happened at the coin. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of work to do, and, and these girls need that that work. They got to they got to do this every day. Speaking of every day, you're going to get a couple of games in next week. Carmine Altoff. Altoff starts off conference play. Being a first year, have you talked to anybody or know anything about your upcoming opponents in the South Seven Conference schedule? Well, just I what I know is. You know, there are, there are a lot of good teams in the South 7 who are, you know, they, they're they just really good competition, and uh, I, I'm not going to, you know, go out and say which team is, is the favorite to win the South 7 or anything like that, but I, I know that Altoff's generally a very good team. they got a good program. I know Carbondale, uh, Centralia, Marion, they're, they're just all uh, good quality programs, and and so, you know, we need to start things off on the right foot next week. There's no question about it in the South 7. And uh, the good thing is it'll be at home. It's a home game on Thursday. But, uh, uh, you know, we just – I'm just hoping we can get some games in. I just want to play. And uh, these girls need to get out here and see what they can do. And, and they need to compete. And when you have played, you played the Fairfield Invite, came in in third place. That brought together a lot of teams from various levels of things, 1A, 2A, 3A, softball. That was a great day for you and your team to start off the season at third place trophy, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, the fact that we didn't have everybody there, uh, you know, a lot of girls were gone to a youth and government uh, school function that day. But, uh, you know, the girls that were out there, they played hard, they played well. Uh, we got two wins. Any time you can go to a tournament like that where there's some good competition and, and get two wins and get a third place trophy and bring home the trophy, that's okay. And we were able to do that. And uh, you know, for the most part, just three really well played games. You know, we won six to four against Marshall. We were down four nothing against Carmine. Came back and lost five to three, but it was a well played game. Uh, a couple things didn't go our way, and, and you know, we lost that game. And then we came back and beat Fairfield five nothing. And, and that was uh, another really well played game, and so it was good. It was a cold day when I talked to you guys last Saturday. It was sunny out, and I, you know, I was thinking it was going to be like fifty degrees, and then we got off the bus. And it was cold, windy, windshield was down in the upper twenties, and but the girls fought through it and they played really well. Fought through it and played really well, and you'll start rolling in that schedule next week. As I said, Carmi Altoff, then the next week, Marion Carbonell JV tournament, Edwards County. And then a slew of games in a row here against some of the <laughs> – it's a murderer's row. Cokia at home on a Thursday, Modern Day on a Friday, Nashville on a Saturday, and then Centre on a Tuesday. That will really test your team early on in the schedule, won't it? Yeah, but that's okay. That's what we want to do. Um, you know, like last night, we go to DeCoin and, and we got beat 10 uh, nothing, And we gave up seven runs in the third inning. It was kind of a, it was a brutal inning for us. We just couldn't get out of the inning. It was just one thing after another. But, you know, looking back and after reflecting on the game a little bit last night, you know, it, it was good for us to have that. Uh, I, I don't want us to have any false pretense of what, what we're doing or you're thinking, hey, everything's all right and peachy. We, we need to play good competition to see where we're really at. 
see and, where uh, you're – go ahead. Sorry about that. Well, and, and, and you know, and the Coins obviously one of the top three or four teams we're going to see this year. They're a great program. But we got to get our confidence level up. And being indoors or playing out on the outfield grass, that's not going to get our confidence level up. We need to be out on the field as much as possible. And so even if we're playing a game and we, and we get beat like we did yesterday – I'm I'm okay with that. We we got we got to know where we're at. So we can keep getting better. We got to keep getting better. Play as many games as possible. And play Ducoin and others. You're going to get that opportunity all year. And then again, when you when you look at this, you have a couple of tournaments on the schedule too. And I know I'm looking away down the road here, but oh, Fallon tournament and Triad tournament. You're going to run into some buzz saws there in that competition level. And by that yep. point, you got to do that, don't you? At the level that you are in Class Three A softball, go out and find those teams to play. Yeah, we need to have that. We need to put that on our resume. You know, we can get some key quality wins against some good good teams. You know, we can, we can have that on our resume, and at the end of the year we can look back on that, especially for regional time. Uh, you know, when you're Mount Vernon, you're, you're always kind of stuck in between a little bit. But we we got to play the good 3A and 4A teams and the, and the good 2A teams, Nashville, uh, DeCoin, Carterville, those type of teams that will – that would definitely look good for us and, and, you know, get our confidence level up. Well, you know, once you get your confidence level up, we're going to do a few games. Our first one will be the game at Waltonville here on April 1st. Before we get to that point in that situation, we got to ask you our WMI Sports social media question of the week. We know your other job, of course, is assistant coach for Lady Rams basketball team. So our question this week is, who is your pick to win the NCAA tournament as it stands right now? Well, uh... Unfortunately, I don't know how it worked out this way because I'm not a Hoosiers fan. I'm, I really do not like Indiana a whole lot. <laughs> my brother-in-law is Matt Green. He, he's a big Indiana fan, and we, I give him a hard time a lot. But, man, I tell you, they're just – I don't know how it worked out this way, but when I got done with the bracket, I had Indiana winning it. So, you know, I guess I didn't go with my heart this year. I went with my brain. And But they're, they're a good team. You know, that's who I have. I, but I have three Big Ten teams in the Final Four. I just love the Big Ten. And, but – uh it just ended up in Indiana, I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's all right. If you want to do that one time, you can pick Indiana. Being a yeah, Kentucky it's guy, we'll let you go. Life. I've never done that, and hopefully it'll be the last. All right. Hey, Coach, thank you. Good luck. We'll see you in a week when you're at Waltonville for our first game of Lady Rams softball. But until then, good luck and win them all before we get there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have that's, a good one. You too. That's Lance Bolt, head coach of the Mount Vernon Lady Rams softball team. Off to a start, they had that third place finish in the Fairfield invite. Lost yesterday to Ducoin, but will be at home next week for a couple of games. Tuesday at home against Carmi and Altoff at home on Thursday. Both 430 starts will be varsity and JV games going on on Tuesday and Thursday. We need to take a break and come back. On the other side, we'll talk a little bit more high school baseball. Brett Blondie, the head coach of the Benton Rangers, will join us. The Rangers come into Mount Vernon on Monday for a non-conference game. We'll talk to him about his Rangers and how they've opened their season so far here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. PMB to Go Mobile Banking from People's National Bank is here. Sign up for PMB to Go Mobile Banking and get instant access to your account info with your mobile device. You can check your account balances, transfer funds, pay bills, review recent transactions, and much more. The best part is PMB to Go Mobile Banking is free. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, wireless carrier fees may apply. State Farm, this is Jessica. Hey, Jessica, Jerry Newman. Does State Farm offer more discounts to more drivers? Yep, like the good driver discount. So it's for good, but not great drivers. No, Jerry. There's also the multi-line discount. For calling from multiple lines while driving. You should never use a phone while driving. I only make calls from my car when I'm stuck in a ditch or something. Are you in a ditch? Yes, I am. State Farm offers more discounts to more drivers than any other insurance company. Get to a better state. One more reason to call State Farm Agent Tony Wilton Mount Vernon at 242-1421. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. As we get ready to go here, as we have Denny Zerwinski, that's me. Mike Richardson, Jeff Crow, Chris Ugall in the house here. A little bit of everything going on this morning here on the 
Studios on Broadway. And joining us now, talk a little high school baseball. The Benton Rangers will come to Mount Vernon on Monday afternoon, weather permitting, is the head coach of the Benton Rangers, Brett Blondie. Coach Blondie, how are you this morning? I'm great, Danny. How are you? I'm doing very well. First thing i got to ask, special ed teacher, special ed teacher, how's your year going? It's going phenomenal. I've had great kids this year and small numbers, so we've got to be individualized in our instruction. I feel like we're making great gains towards uh, making annual yearly progress in my classroom. Your team gets a big 10-7 to win at Carmi yesterday. Listen to a little bit of that game on our sister station out of Carmi. How's your season been going on here at the start with uh, weather and getting games in? Well, we we got our first game from last night. We've actually had one rained out, and we had one. Uh, we had two rained out, and we're making one up today with Anna Jones, bro. So, um We've been able to play five. We've won two, and we've lost three. But, uh, you know, we're, we're getting better each game, and, and I feel a heck of a lot better now than what I did, uh, you know, a week and a half ago. Uh, the weather is not great, but our kids have done a great job. They've, uh, they've done really well with uh, coming out and battling through the elements. And, uh, you know, I told them, I said, it's only going to get easier. You know, it's not going to get any tougher. It's not going to get a whole lot colder, but. Hopefully, anyway, I say that, I never know with, with our weather. I guess it's supposed to snow, though. Isn't it supposed to snow? The thing i got to ask is this. Last year to this year, the talent, the ex- expectations of your team last year, how is your team this year handling that, knowing they're in the spotlight now as far as what was lost last year? You know, I we've got great kids. We've got – they're good students. They work hard. Uh, you know, obviously it's difficult to replace a lot of the ability that we lost. But we hope that we can make up for a lot of that and hard work, determination, paying attention, focusing on details, uh, hustling, you know, doing all the little things. That's what we're really looking forward to doing. And, and that's the way that I like to play baseball and, you know, come in as underdogs and things. But, you know, our, our kids top to bottom uh, are, uh, are good kids and, and battle. And, and we're a little young. You know, we've got some young kids playing. But hopefully they'll get better. They'll learn this year and they'll get better and, and they'll – continue to compete. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Monday in Mount Vernon. Before then, the Ohio Division, known for its baseball. Obviously, you, you have Harrisburg, Heron, all that. What, who's the favorite in that Ohio Division this year? Well, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. You know, Harrisburg, uh, they've got some good pitching and, and some kids that hit the ball well, and, uh, you know, they're always good. I think Massac's going to be much improved. They've got some good young kids coming up. Um, Heron's going to be improved, and they were good. They beat us last year. They were, that was our only conference loss last year was to Heron, so, and they've got a lot of kids coming back on their team. Um, Murfreesboro, they lost some of their pitching, but, you know, they're always, they're always solid. Um, and West Frankfurt's young kids, they're, they're getting older, and they're going to be a lot better. So, you know, I, it's, it's tough to pick a favorite. It's tough to pick anyone that you'd say, you know, because it's baseball, and anyone can beat baseball. But, uh, like I said, it, it'll be tough. It's, it, you know, it's, it's going to be fairly, uh, it's going to look a little bit like our, ske- our schedule's tough. We play some tough tough teams on our schedules. Hopefully that prepares us for that Ohio division. Speaking of tough, we'll end this with your with a final question. We know you got a busy day coming up. Our final question is our WMX Sports Media, social media question of the week. And it is, I already know your bracket's trash. You've already told me. Who's your pick to win, who's your pick to win the NCAA men's basketball tournament? Florida. Florida. I got, Florida. I got no reason why either. I saw parts of six games this year. <laughs> You're going with the Gators, huh? I'm going with the Gators. I read some article on ESPN the magazine the other day, uh, just kind of bits and pieces of it. They've got, they've got some kind of good statistic that says they play really good defense. So that's. <laughs> That's what I went with. I, I, don't, I, I don't have any idea. I, have I got to feel like maybe Coach Claude helped you out in that at all or no? <laughs> no, Coach Claude didn't, but it was Coach Weinmiller's magazine. Oh, is so that right? That may have been uh, what it was. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us. We're sorry for the technical difficulties. We look forward to seeing you on Monday with your Benton team up here in Mount Vernon. Can't wait to talk to you and see your Benton Rangers out here on a Monday night in Mount Vernon. No problem. Thanks, Danny. All right, thank you. That's Brett Blondie. We really appreciate him and the patience that he put up with us as we battle the ghosts and demons here. That happens sometimes, as I mentioned, a hundred times over on live radio. But Mike, it's a Benton team. Got to the sectional last year. Got beat by AJ. But again, that's Benton and Harrisburg with Murphy in that Ohio division. Always a very tough baseball division. 
yeah, Harrisburg bringing back so much pitching, as Coach Blondie alluded to. And, uh, boy, dude, can't wait till those two teams play. But, you know, what he said was in, in the Benton program now with a bunch of youth, you know, getting them involved and showing those kids the winning ways. Uh, that's always a big plus for your program. You've got to have this, the leadership of your veterans on a squad, but you've got to have young kids coming up to be around the older guys and get used to that winning atmosphere. And speaking of that, we're going to transition right on into another baseball coach. The Rams hopefully we'll get to see next Friday at Ducoin Indians, coached by Tim Kraft. And, Coach, how are you on this Saturday morning? Hey, Coach, uh, how's it going with the Ducoin Indians so far this season? Uh, we're three and one right now. Um, just like everybody, I think we're uh, ready to get rid of this cold weather. But uh, you know, we've done all right so far. <laughs> oh, done all right so far. And a veteran team. You're two years removed from a third place finish at uh, at the state tournament. A veteran team for you returning in that Mississippi division. You got a lot of expectation with all these veterans come back, don't you? Yeah, um, we knew. You know, this group was a good group when they were in junior high and. Uh, they were patient. They were kind of stuck behind some older groups, and uh, last year several of them got a sh- uh, chance to play. And um, they definitely improved over the years. And uh, we've got some younger guys that have kind of blended in with them well to, to give us some innings on the mound. And uh, it's just a really good blend all the way across. All the way across. You lose Keegan Robbins to graduate last year. He missed a lot for the injury, but you returned the likes of Travis Chapman, Brendan Fred, Garrett Dorsey, Nate Boss, Austin Mansker, Camden Mercer. I mean, you returned a lot of guys from last year, and and to me, it seems like these guys have been playing for five or six years already. The bound of a varsity experience that that crew has is a lot for a high school team. Yeah, um, you know, Travis, he started as a sophomore for that team that went to state, and uh, some of those other guys that you mentioned, you know, played sparingly in that year, but uh, did get some experience in going to state, and they kind of got a taste for it. And uh, we've just been fortunate that, you know, we've been able to keep some kids in the program and keep them progressing through, and, uh, you know, it's just been great to watch them grow. All right, we just had Brett Blondie on before you, and now you, and you, you are guys, I believe, still, if I recall right, still coach the junior high teams in your respective towns and programs. How does that help out as far as you coaching those kids, not only in high school, but get two or three years extra in junior high as well? Um, I think it makes a huge difference, and I'm fortunate enough that a lot of my assistant coaches that helped me at the high school also come and help me at the junior high level. Um, you know, the kids get the same terminology since well, when some of them are sixth graders or seventh graders, and they hear the same thing all the way through high school, so it makes it kind of easy to work on a little bit more advanced things once they get in high school because they're used to being around us and know what we expect. Already 3-1 and one on the season, as you mentioned. You'll dive into Mount Vernon next Friday, hopefully weather permitting in this time of year. But you talk about the Mississippi division. You get into some AJs. You know, Sparta's been good over the years. Of course, Nashville, DuCoin. It seems like every year everybody kind of very competitive on that side, if not a trade-off between teams that make deep runs in the postseason. Yeah, um, our league's always been competitive, and uh, we expect the same this year. Um, Nashville has a lot back, and we were kind of looking down the list, and we may not know so, uh, as much about some teams, but we know that everybody's got at least one really good pitcher, and uh, pretty much every team in our conference all played pretty tough schedules, so we kind of beat up on one another uh, throughout the regular season, and it often ends up in the regional. We always end up being paired together with two or three schools from the conference, too. Making a new coin, you guys got one of those bad, nice facilities. I mean, you, you got the turf infield, the grass half field, you got Van Meter field, that's all turf now. What has that done for your team, the softball team as well, as far as getting in practices and things in the, in the preseason going on with the weather? Well, it's been phenomenal, I think, for all the programs. Um, and the fact that if the outfield's too wet, we can just simply just walk right across the track and the outfielders can take fly balls and they're used to seeing fly balls coming off bats. Um, infield wise as long as it's not pouring down rain we can come in and and take infield and do everything else we've got a batting cage out here too so we've been fortunate where you know some of the teams we play they told us it's been their first or second time out where we've been out not every day but just about you know virtually every day uh throughout this spring throughout this spring and we know we'll see you hopefully next friday wish you the best of luck but we got to ask one final question it's our WMI Sports social media question of the week. Uh, no, this does not come from the uh, group of golfers that I play with on a regular, regular basis. But uh, this week's question is, who is your pick to win the NCAA tournament this year in men's basketball? Oh, man. I haven't even You know, 
since Kentucky's not in it, I haven't even really looked at it that close. I've kind of been uh, pouting since they didn't have such a good year. So yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm. It's hard for me to pick Indiana, but they've looked awful good whenever uh, I've seen them play. I've only seen a couple times, but you know, it's, those teams out of the Big Ten just beat up on each other so much. It's, it's kind of a. Uh, I think it might be one of those teams out of there. I, I agree. I've been pouting too. I'm, I've been taking a lot of abuse from said golfers about a co- certain golf bag of mine, but <laughs> it, it'll change next year with what we have coming in. I'm sure. Yep, I agree. Hey, coach, thanks for joining us. Well, we look forward to seeing the Ducoin Indians next Friday in Mount Vernon when they take on the Rams. Good luck. Thanks for joining us, and good luck the rest of the season. Okay, thanks for having me. That's Tim Kraft, head coach of the Ducoin Indians. His team will come into Mount Vernon next Friday afternoon to take on the Rams in a non-conference game. I think we need to take a break, although we went through a slew of breaks, but we're going to take one anyway, kind of get things settled. Hour one is in the book. Hour two coming up. After the break, we'll have the head coach of the Weber Township Lady Trojan softball team, Greg Alvis, will join us here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. With two new hospitals, trusted physicians, and dedicated staff, it's clear that our local healthcare industry is helping to make our community stronger every day. Hi, I'm Terry Prosize, a commercial lender and healthcare banking specialist at Community First Bank. I'm putting over 20 years of healthcare and business experience to work for our medical community and local businesses. Whether you have an expanding physician practice, an existing business, or hoping to start a new business, I have the financial prescription for you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and I. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. Kenny Sorwinski with Jeff Crow pushing buttons. Mike Richardson alongside Chris Hugo running around. He'll join us here in a little bit. And joining us now is the head coach of the Weber Township Lady Trojans softball team, Greg Alvis. Coach, how's it going this morning? Well, it's pretty quiet this morning. Uh, we were supposed to play, but uh, got canceled out, so... Uh, Still waiting to play. Have Have you played a game yet this year? I should ask that first. No, we have not. We uh, we've we've lost about three or four games to the weather already. Our field uh, needs some needs some work, and so we've we've not been able to do much on it at home, and and uh, and we've had one uh, one or two away games also. They just couldn't uh, get their fields ready, so. We're uh, we're hoping to get in some stuff next week if if possible, um, and uh, if not, uh, we're, we'll just we'll just keep practicing in the gym for right now. When you look at this, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there was a year off last year for Weber Township softball. Is that correct? Am That's rem- correct. Okay. Uh, there was no team. There was not uh, enough uh, interest, not enough players to fill the team. So uh, we're 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 getting it going again. Uh, we don't have a big roster. We have 12. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I think the interest is growing. We've got good, good numbers at the junior high level. So I think, uh, I think we're back on track. Back in the back on track, when you take a year off in the program and then you've got to come back and schedule games, how hard was that for you and Athletic Director Sam Root to go out and find softball games on such a short notice in order to get another season back up for Weber Township softball? It wasn't, it wasn't terribly difficult. We, of course, got the, the Midland Trail Conference games, so uh, that, that was set for us. And, and usually... Uh, you know, teams uh, want to pick up a couple of games here and there, especially, uh, you know, when they can play somebody maybe like us that's not sure if we're going to be, uh, how strong we're going to be, and that might help them a little bit. Uh, so we, we picked up a few games. We don't have a big uh, schedule. Uh, we've got the conference, and then we've got ZRC, uh, Fairfield, Hamilton County, Christ Our Rock. Uh, so it's it's not a bad schedule for our 
for our first year going again. Talk about some of the kids you're going to be relying on this year to help get you some wins once you get be able to get out on the field. Well, I think uh, we have a good a senior uh, athlete in Courtney Gervin, who uh, all conference in basketball this year, and just a, a very good all-around athlete, uh, good, strong, aggressive header, good fielder. Um, we only have an, uh, two seniors, another uh, senior, Heather Riley, a track athlete, and we have to share a little bit with track. Uh, those two seniors we have, I think, are going to help us a lot. Um, and we've got a young freshman, uh, Megan Cluck, who uh, very strong player, good hitter. Uh, our pitching, we have uh, three pitchers, uh, but we're, we're a little untested, and we've got one that's uh, a little bit uh, banged up right now. Um, been a houseworth, a junior, who's uh, taken a couple years off from pitching and uh, a little bit banged up with her arm. So we we have a lot of inexperience. Um, I think we've got potential, yet uh, at this point, it's just it's just not uh, sure how to how we can uh, evaluate things having not played at all. But when you say when you can't play, and that's the toughest thing at this time of year, when you can't get out and play, whether it's weather or other things going on, how hard is that as a coach to keep things fresh, to keep things uh, new for the players so they don't get tired of the drudgery going on and practicing every day in the gym? Yes, uh, it's starting to wear a little bit. Uh, the girls want to get outside and play, and, and uh, we, <clears throat> we just have not been able to do that hardly at all. And so it... We've done a lot of repetitive things, uh, hitting into the net, uh, soft tossing, a lot of uh, a lot of throwing inside, and and that's not all bad because we need uh, some basic uh, skill work. So I can't complain about that. But um, we we have not hardly been on our field. We haven't been on our field once for a full practice. We've hit in the outfield. Uh, we've took a few balls on uh, the left side of the infield. So. Uh, we're, we're we're just really uh, at this point waiting uh, in, inside, and I, I'm my thought is we need to practice even if we can't get outside. It's even if it's just a little bit of a struggle, we need to work. So we're going to practice inside uh, until until we can get out. Until you can get out, and this week that includes games uh, against. Yeah. Woodlawn and Odin. So, I mean, you jump right into conference play if you're able to get games in. That's a tough start when you're coming out for the first time your games jump right on in the conference season. Yes, it, that's what it looks like for this week, anyhow. Uh, Woodlawn on Monday, uh, Odin uh, on Wednesday. Uh, again, uh, I don't think our girls at this point really care who we play just as long as we play, and I don't either at this point. I, uh, it, it may be a little bit tough for us, but we need to see what we've got so we can evaluate and then be able to determine what we need to work on, uh, see live pitching, uh, and, and so we're, we'll be glad to play and uh, just see where we stand, and uh, I think the girls will, will accept whatever happens at this point. Hey, we'll accept whatever happens as well. We're going to ask you our final questions, our WMI Sports social media question of the week, and this week's question is... Who is your pick to win the NCAA men's basketball tournament? Well, I'm I'm a Lady Hoosier, <laughs> and so I know that's not always popular in some parts of the world around here. But I I'm going to have to go with Indiana. I think uh, hopefully they can uh, they do it. I'd I'd prefer to have um, my alma mater Butler win, but uh, I just don't think they're going to do it this year. So. I'm going with the Hoosiers. Well, that's all right. You can go with the Hoosiers. That's a nice, safe pick, and a lot of people are putting their answer down as Indiana right now. Yeah. Uh, they haven't put together a lot of consecutive good good wins. That's the only thing that concerns me. They they might win one or two, and then they, they uh, seem to stumble. So uh, I think it'll be a tough matchup against Miami uh, to get there. Yeah. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We wish you good luck this season, and good luck Thank to the you. Weber Township Lady Trojan softball team. Thank you very much. Thanks that, for having me. You're welcome. That's Greg Alvis, head coach of the Weber Township Lady Trojan softball team. They'll get underway hopefully third season this week with a couple of games against Woodlawn and Odin this upcoming week. We need to take a break. 
On the other side, we have a national championship game tonight for an area team. The Red Lake College men's basketball team will play in the national championship tonight at Danville for Division II JUCO teams against Moraine Valley at 730. We're going to have the head coach, Randy House, join us here in just a bit on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. Southern Illinois now has a better home for sports. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Jam-packed with local scores, video highlights, and archives of every local sports broadcast on WMIX. Did your team win? Missed that game-winning shot last night? Didn't catch your favorite coach on the Saturday Sports Show? WMIXSports.com is right at your fingertips. On your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, or your video game console. It's the all-new WMIXSports.com. Another free service from Withers Broadcasting. Paying bills can be such a hassle. You write a check, find an envelope and a stamp, mail it, and repeat. Bill pay with People's National Bank can save you time and money. Just go to peoplesnationalbank.com, log in, and pay all of your bills without using a single stamp. Pay anyone, any time of the day, instantly. Stop by People's National Bank today, and we'll help you get started. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909, member FDIC. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. And I am surmising and guessing that we have probably, if not the happiest, one of the happiest guys in Southern Illinois right now on the show, the head coach of the Renly College men's basketball team, Randy House, is on. Coach, I got a feeling you've got to be at least halfway pretty happy right now heading in this big game tonight. You know what, I'm, uh, I'm pleased for our kids. Uh, I'm pleased for the community and all of Southern Illinois that um, you know this is this is an opportunity of a lifetime for everybody involved and and uh, you know everybody has asked me you know am I excited am I jacked up and all that kind of stuff and I'm like you know what I I don't get nervous really I don't get too worked up because I've already got to play my games and this this is more about the kids and what they're accomplishing. The depth of your program and everything else, how you've been able to play as many kids you have and wear people down. Has that been kind of a thing for you when you bring these guys in, the depth of your program, able to wear people down? You know, that's, uh, that's been our strong suit this year, and, and uh, we got that idea, if you want to call it an idea, from last year because we were, uh, we were about seven deep as far as guys that we played. Uh, we came home from the national tournament last year after losing the game by, by uh, four and a game by five, and, and uh you know, this all started with Canal Roll and then Noel last year and everything and, and uh you know, we were we were talking last year to the kids and to Noel and to Tanal and stuff and I and he's like, Coach, you know, I said, How how's things going after the season and everything? And he's like, Coach, it took me about two weeks before I got my legs back and you know, right then and there we knew that we needed to be we needed to be deeper, uh, to be able to make sure that those kids got plenty of rest during the year. Uh, in the games because you know when you're when you're in the game you're the adrenaline pumping and all that kind of stuff but uh, you know once you get done with that you've got uh, you know you've got to let your muscles uh, rejuvenate and, and grow and everything like that and rest so uh, we knew we needed to be deeper uh, I think we did a, a decent job of recruiting recruiting our depth at positions we've got some work to do for next year uh, but you know it uh, it has worked well for us. And that's going to be kind of our plan from here on out. Uh, not only along with the depth that I was talking about, and you were too, uh, the versatility that you've been able to put on the floor. Uh, you can rotate these guys around in so many different positions. Uh, that's just got to wear on opposing coaches. You know, it's uh, that's another thing that we looked at is, is to being, a, being able to have kids that can play more than one position. Uh, one thing we need to probably work on for next year is, is uh, having a having a true point guard. You know, Corey, Corey has done a great job, uh, but Corey's not a true point guard and he's not a true two guard. So he's kind of a combo that can do a little bit of everything. Uh, Trice is a, Trice is a true point guard, uh, but you know we we've got guys that can play the two or the three. We've got guys that can play the two three. And we'll play we played Bra- or, uh, Dawson at the point this year uh, for numerous games. We played him at the point. Uh, and last night we were playing him as a four man, and so and he was guarding the biggest guy on the floor, which is the five man. So, you know, we've we've been blessed with that to, to be able to find kids that can play multiple positions. Uh, I think that creates matchup problems uh, sometimes for us defensively because we've got a smaller guy on a bigger guy or a bigger guy on a smaller guy. 
but that works at the other end of the floor too. Somebody bigger or smaller has got to guard one of our bigger or smaller guys. So, you know, therefore it comes back to that conditioning. If we can get up and down the floor, and we can we can wear people down. Uh, their legs are going to be gone. Their shots are going to be gone, and then we can inflict our will and, and uh, art stuff on them. And that's the thing, key in this is that four games in five days at this level. That's a lot of basketball to try to win a national championship, and you got a team that's able to withstand some of that with uh, getting four games in five days. You know, we we have, and the thing of it is, is we got to break Thursday, uh, and that might play a factor tonight. I don't know. I mean, there'll be a lot of adrenaline. It's it's one game, and then you're done. Um, but Moraine, this is going to be their third game in three days because they uh, they got their break on Wednesday. So uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to see uh, late in the game uh, whether our conditioning is, and you know, most of that will probably come on the defensive end and rebounding. That we can keep keep applying some pressure, uh, we can get some rebounds, uh, and if we can get you know if we can get up on them and. and uh, you know, demoralize a little bit and then withstand the run that they're going to make because that's always going to happen, uh, especially with the shot clock. I mean, it's uh, it's inevitable that we miss a few shots. That happened last night. It happened against South Suburban. Uh, but it's inevitable that you're going to make a run it's just if you can withstand it or not. In this quick format, four games, five days, how much scouting, how much meeting time goes on in this situation as far as this goes? You know what we have? Uh, we scouted Cecil from the standpoint of the NJCAA requires us to send them a DVD of our Legion Championship game, and the same thing for them. They had to send us one. So the assistant coaches watched it. I watched about uh, six or seven possessions of it to see what they did to start the game. Uh, since then, we've sat over and watched a few of the ball games to get some tendencies. Uh, we go to, uh, we've had a shoot around every day except the day we didn't. Every day we have a game up here, we, we decided to have a, a, uh, hour of practice or so at 11 over at Parkland. Uh, so we're getting ready to drive to Champaign here shortly and, and, uh, uh, work out. And, you know, we'll talk to the kids there. We've not met with them any as far as, as, uh, you know, in hotel, in the hotel room or, you know, show them any plays or this is what they do or anything like that. You know, we're all about what we do and not about what the other team does. And, and you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you hear this all the time, but it really is actually a pretty simple game. We need to either score more points than them or do a better job defending. And we need to stay between the ball and the basket. I mean, that's good defense, and we need to do our best to put the ball in the basket. And so, you know, there's really not a lot of scouting. And you know what the, the flip side of that is, is you can scout all you want, but you can't measure a kid's heart. And, and uh, these kids of mine have got great hearts. Uh, one thing i got to ask when you got something going like this, off the floor, obviously you play one game a day, four and five days. Is there anything that, the, that they do in Danville to keep the teams occupied, or is it pretty well you're on your own with your team in the, in the city of Danville what they want to do? No, this is, Danville's not Las Vegas. So uh, we've got to uh, we've got to pretty much keep ourselves occupied, and, and you know what? With uh, with it being the format that it is, with with the tournament being a maximum of four games in five days, uh, our day off we went and had pizza and went bowling in the afternoon. Uh, got together as a team and did that and had a really good time. Uh, but we like I say, we get up at, at uh, we get the kids up at nine or nine thirty. Uh, we go shoot around. It takes about 30 minutes from here to get to Parkland uh, over in Champaign. So we shoot at 11. Uh, we stop someplace and eat uh, on the way back. We'll grab a sandwich or, or something like that uh, on the way back. We come back to the hotel room. We lay down for, for uh, get the kids down for a couple, three hours in the afternoon and get them up at 4 or 5 o'clock and, and uh, go play basketball. And so, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've really... Because there's not a lot to do, and, and on the on the other side, uh, you know, I, when I played, I always liked to get a lot of rest because you know you use a lot of energy in these games, whether you think you do or not. And so, uh, it's actually a pretty good format. Uh, this this has worked well for us. Uh, it's probably the kind of schedule that we will use any time that we make it back here to the national tournament. When you played, I want to go back because you played Division One at SIU, and, and you're you know people are asking. You know, this week, okay, they're they're at Danville. What's going on? Are these guys at the next level? Uh, comparatively speaking, is there a way to describe the the talent level you're seeing this week in Danville compared to the Division One level you were part of for four years? 
Well, I'll tell you what, the, uh, and this is, this is the truth, the, the talent level is not much different than the Division One level. And when I say that, I don't mean that, that you know, we've got a bunch of, uh, you know, tremendous athletes and all that kind of stuff. But there's, the kids that are playing here, I've got kids on my team that if it wasn't because of their grades or a family situation or whatever the case may be, they would be at a Division One school. And so the talent level is exactly the same uh, for the most part, but it everybody just has a hole in their game and it depends some some guys have small holes some guys have large holes and and uh, you know there's a lot of talent here uh not just on our team but on the other teams being I mean, those guys up here the, the team we played last night had a kid that uh university of miami michigan state mm -hmm. uh, uh kansas state all those guys are recruiting uh you know he's got to be a decent talent if those guys think he can play and you know we did a good job on him we, we held him to 15 and and uh, you know, and we won. So that's the that's the bottom line. But no, as far as far as talent goes, that's what people don't understand is is just because it's a community college or junior college, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's not like we're getting the 12th best player off of a bad high school team and throwing this team out there and playing. These mm -hmm. these guys are tremendous athletes. They run and jump and dunk and shoot and do everything exactly the way the guys that, that played at my level did. Uh, speaking of that, and I asked his tongue in cheek, did you really rest when you're in Division One at basketball at SIU? Did you have to try to instruct Matt Wynn on how to play the game of basketball? Because I heard you, you did know, a lot Matt, of teaching back in the I, day. Well, I tell you what, Matt. Uh, I, the, the biggest thing for Matt was that he could shoot it, and I couldn't. So, uh, you know, Matt would have had if Matt would have gone JUCO, uh, he would have averaged. 25 a game because I mean he was so up and down and he would he would have thrived in a game like this. But no, Matt uh, Matt was a big one. The main thing I had to do for Matt was wake him up for class and keep on track of his clothes. See, that's that's the stories I've always heard. Now he denies this, but more than one person besides you have told me this story. That's why I had to ask. You know? Yeah. No, I uh, uh, he, he he slept really well um, and he didn't. Uh, so I had to. I was his human alarm clock. And then I had to make sure that uh, we had all of his clothes on road trips and picked up and everything like that. Ah, I love it. Hey, one final question. I know you've been busy. You got a national championship game tonight, but the Division One men's tournament's going on. Our final question is you. Do you have a pick for the men's basketball Division One tournament? Who's going to win it all in the college basketball? You know what? I do not. I haven't. Uh, I didn't fill out a bracket. I'm being serious. I couldn't tell you who's playing who. Right. Uh, I do like the uh, the thing that I do like about this year because a, a lot of those games fall on the same nights that we have played uh, over the over the whole season. So uh -huh. uh, I haven't got to watch a whole lot of college basketball. But so <clears throat> my pick, honestly, would have probably been Georgetown, but that shows you how smart I am. But uh, the uh, I like the parity, uh, and I'm always going to root for the underdog. I don't I don't dislike the favorites, uh, but I've always been an underdog myself, and so. You know, I like the uh, I like the University of Miami. I like the the Valpo's and the Butlers and the the Harvards and the teams like that. Hey, uh, no disrespect to the big boys, but you know, it's nice to see the little guy get something every now and then. Well, Coach, we're hoping that the little mm -hmm. guy at Ren Lake College gets him one more win tonight and gets that national championship back to Ina and Southern Illinois. We wish you nothing but the best of luck tonight. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go give it our best effort, and if our best effort is not good enough, we're still gonna have had a successful season, and it will not change my thought process, process and my love for these kids because this is a this is an awfully good basketball team, and I've I've enjoyed every second of being a part of it. Right, we agree with it. We we'll wish you the best of luck, Coach. Thanks for taking the time to join us this morning on a busy morning. Good luck tonight. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Randy House joins us, and oh my goodness, we're in Lake one game away from being a national champion. Man, how good is that? Especially with our local kids, uh, Bronson and Dawson and uh, Corey Ayala and others on that team that are going to have that opportunity tonight. Oh, absolutely. It's phenomenal. And what, what a season they've had. And I mean, they've got the the community all stirred up and excited. I mean, that's all the, that was the talk. I was with a group of guys uh, Thursday over in the Nashville area, about 12 or 15 guys, and that's all we could talk about. And, you know, you get that excitement in such a big area and, and happening down at Wren Lake, why that's that's what it's all about. And 
you know, for the team, uh, for Randy and his coaching staff and, and all the effort that they've put in, um, you know, not only just this season, but, you know, last year uh, getting this thing turned around uh, in such a short period of time is just uh, it's just phenomenal and it's great for the community. And uh, anytime I can get to see and watch, uh, I call them my kids, that'll never change. Mm-hmm. Anytime I can get a chance to watch them guys play, uh, it's a it's a blessing and an opportunity to do so. I know a lot of people have talked to or had made the trip last night. Probably will make the trip tonight to Danville and root this team on. I mean, it's one of those things that doesn't happen very often. And you know, Randy House, you know, he played a bit in high school in the '80s. Very successful. Played under Rich Heron. You know, Benton made a couple trips to state and, you know, in super sectionals when he played. Then went to SIU, a successful Division I career, four-year starter, 1,000 points score, I believe. I mean, he's not any stranger to this kind of success. I mean, this is what he wants. And when he took that job at Ren Lake, <clears throat> it wasn't like everybody was beating down the door at Ren Lake to take that job. That was something he has built from the ground up here. Well, we, we've talked a lot about that off-air uh, with different people, and, and you're exactly right. It's they wasn't just having a, a stack full of resumes in for that position, you know, and sort of logical. And after the announcement was made that Randy House was going to take over the program, you know, it was just one of them like the old proverbial light bulb going over your head. It's like, you know, that's a that's a pretty good decision and a pretty good situation for Ren Lake College to be in now to have somebody like that step in and, and being willing to get in into the middle of all that. Mm-hmm. And now look how you're going to be rewarded. And, and he said it right. They're going to come to play tonight. I mean, they're going to give it everything they've got. He's going to play 10, 11 guys, and they're going to play hard from the horn, from the tip off to the horn. And if it works out, they're a champion on paper. If it don't, they're still champions because mm-hmm. they've had an unbelievable season. They've beat everybody in front of them this year. Uh, won the conference. Uh, won the regional again. And incredibly – when you look back at how long Wren Lake has been in existence, these last two years, the only regional champions they've ever had. And they've had some good basketball teams down there. Uh, and they used to. Phenomenal well, teams. Well, they used to be at a different level, as we remember. Right. They used to feed out to Hutch, Kansas, which exactly, if in the you regular. don't have some uh, you know, players, you don't last long in Hutch. Right. But and this new division, you know, that came about, and now they have another opportunity to present themselves to it. And it's just. It's just great, and it's got the whole community excited and couldn't be happier for that group of kids and that, that coaching staff. And that uh, team, Ren Lake College, men's basketball team, played tonight at Danville at 730 for the national championship. We wish Coach Randy House and his team the best of luck in bringing that national championship back to Ina in southern Illinois. We need to take a break. We're going to shift gears from the hardwood of the junior college level to the hardwood of the high school level. Tis the season for the All-Star Games that are going to be coming on at the high school level for basketball, football, baseball, spring, evolves into summer. One next week will happen, courtesy of the Benton's Lions Club. We're going to have Dave Severn on and talk about that here after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. I'm Eddie Robbins, Dave Bowers. We'll look at your next round weather. Rather cloudy today, a high 52. Tonight, cloudy, chilly, a cold rain much of the time. Wet snow mixing in late, a low of 35. And Sunday, that cold rain mixed with wet snow becoming all wet snow. And a slushy 2 to 4 inches expected through the evening. Temperatures will hold in the middle 30s. And then Monday, cloudy, windy, and cold with a few flurries and a high 37. Next round weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois.
final half hour of the Saturday Sports Show brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals. And that was Mike Richardson. I'm Denny Swinski. Jeff Crow pushing the buttons. Chris, you going to house as well. And it's that time of year. High school basketball's done. Spring starts to come out of winter. and summer, we have all-star games. And one of them that's been going on in the area for a long, long time is the Lions Club All-Star Game at Bryn Lake College. It's been in the summer. It's now in the spring. And joining us to talk about that All-Star Game coming up next Friday night is Mr. Dave Severn. Mr. Severn, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, Danny. Thanks for allowing us to come on this morning and talk about the Lions Club All-Star Game. We appreciate it very much. Hey, we want to promote you and that and the high school kids and that event. And that event's been going on for how long? This will be the 31st. The, the, I can't talk. The 35th Annual All-Star Game. It actually, uh, Coach Heron started. It was called the Pepsi-Cola all-Star Game back in the day. He started it in, uh, at Benton High School gym, and then uh, they used to have it in, in June. We had it there for, up until last year, and then um, they moved it from Benton to Ren Lake for the simple fact that there wasn't any air conditioning. And Rich Heron Gym in June is uh, a uh, the <laughs> yeah. world's largest sauna, so we moved it to Ren Lake because the gym was air conditioned. And man, what a what a home! They treat us right. And that's an opportunity there at all the, through the years. That's an opportunity there. Your, your high school kids are done. They're not going to play on high school floors anymore. So for those kids that are moving to the next level, that's an opportunity, kind of like a baptism, to get on that college floor and play once again. That's exactly right. You know, um, we went up to the, the Red Lake game last night, and Mark and Pat Turner were in the car with us, and we were talking, and, and I reminded him about the time I went in his office many years ago and to thank him for allowing us to have the game at, at, the, at Red Lake. Excuse me, I'm still trying to get my voice back from screaming last night at the ball game. Um, <laughs> but he said, no. He said, we want to thank the Benton Lions Club for showcasing Red Lake College as far as the facilities. And you're exactly right. It's a college floor, great great gymnasium, good location, easy to get to. And uh, so it's a great spot to have a good ball game. And the Benton's Lions Club is a main sponsor of this. What What are the proceeds when you go and talk about the Benton's Lions Club? What What money is what, what raised? What do you use with that? Yep. The... Uh, Great question. I appreciate you asking. The uh, the Lions Club, what we do with the money is we raise it to keep it all local for people that, uh, the whole purpose of why Lions Club exists is um, for people that cannot afford eyeglasses, and now we've also bumped it up the hearing aids. So in other words, the money that we raise from this ball game, we also send a couple kids to Red Lake College and some scholarships each year, too, for money raised from it. But the main focus is eyeglasses and hearing aids, and I'll throw this out, Danny, if you're listening this morning, you know anyone, not in Illinois, not in the United States, but anywhere in the world, because the Lions Club is the largest organization of its type in the world. If you know anyone in the world that cannot afford a pair of eyeglasses, you contact the Lions Club in that area, and they will make sure that they have them. Our little Benton Lions Club, we've collected, I think, I don't want to exaggerate here, but I know it's over 3,000, close to 4,000 pairs of used eyeglasses that they send to a location, they redo them, and they ship them to third world countries. But we, of course, are, we're buying brand new eyeglasses for people here in, in the uh, in the area, and also we help with hearing aids. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of it. And if I can just throw this in too, Danny, mm-hmm. when we ha- we'll have a practice on Tuesday night for the kids that uh, you have to come to that practice that we determine who's going to be on which team. Um, and I sit the kids down and I tell them, I said, hey, we're tickled pink. We want to that you guys are and gals are here. We want to showcase your showcase your talent. But I said, here's what Lions Club is all about. And I challenge them in the next five, ten years when they go through college, get a job, start a family, whatever. I said, somebody's going to ask you to join a club, an organization. I said, consider the Lions Club. The only thing we do is raise money for eyeglasses. And I thought, well, what an awesome thing. So um, I want those kids to know why we're doing this. And you mentioned that. It's a great thing that the Lions Club does, and I appreciate you bringing that up and talking about that in detail. But you have this practice on Tuesday night. The kids have to show up, as you mentioned, in order to play. Then after that, is there a draft that goes on, or are the kids already picked out, ready to go? Yeah, the the uh, the draft or, or whatever is actually the coaches that are uh, that are coaching those two games. I give them clipboards with the names of all of the players that are going to be there Tuesday night. And then we have some scrimmage, and what they do, or what we do, is uh, pick those teams at that time. Um, back in the day, it used to be north south, and then mm-hmm. there was an east west, and then we had A against double A, and then we, over the years, we just came up with the idea that, hey, let's pick the players at a practice so we know who's going to come, and let's make sure we got, you know, good centers on each side, good forwards, shooting guards, point guards, whatever, makes for a better game. And so, um, and it's kind of comical to watch these coaches at the practice. 
well, you know, I want so-and-so. No, I want it so-and-so. And uh, so it, it's a good time and a lot of fun. I mean, they're there to play hard and, like you say, put their uniforms on. For some of them, one last time. Right. Some of them are going on to college to play. Some of them are playing other college sports or whatever. And uh, so, um, but anyways. Time, the times in, for these games next week, I believe there's also a boys, uh, there's a boys and a girls game as well, isn't there? That is correct. Uh, the, the games are uh, this coming Friday night uh, at Ren Lake College. The girls' game is at 6. The guys' game is at 8 o'clock. Um, we'd love to have you come out and watch. Here's what we do. We ask the guys to come and watch the girls' game. We ask the girls to stick around and watch the guys' mm-hmm. game. And um, there'll be a three-point shootout contest. There'll be MVP awards given. There'll be a dunk contest. Um, the, uh, so it'll be a good time. We've got a lot of kids coming from all over. As I was telling you, we picked. Uh, we have 45 schools that we looked at seniors, and as you know, I call you and, uh-huh. and other uh, people in Southern Illinois coaches and, and ask, you, "Hey, who have you seen? What do you think about so and so?" Or tell me, you know, who am I missing or whatever. And, and um, so we, it used to be, Danny, as you know, it was the top 30 senior boys and girls. Uh, well, we've, we've expanded that because we couldn't stop at 30, and we try to represent as many schools and give as many opportunities as possible. And uh, so it, it's a lot of fun, a lot of hard work. The guys from the Benton, the guys and gals both from the Benton Lions, do a great job. Do, do you guys still do the purple and gold shirts? I remember that no. back in the day. <laughs> no, you know, that's good. We we quit doing that. You yeah. know, we used to. Um, we'd have the purple and the gold T-shirts, and. Uh, but yep. I got some flack from actually from the uh, reporters like, hey, there's no numbers on the front of those T-shirts. How are we supposed to know who, you know, so-and-so is? And so we kind of did away with the old purple and gold <laughs> T-shirts. I'll tell you what we did is uh, one year we decided we weren't going to use them anymore, so we threw them in the crowd and gave them away. And, and, uh, but, and, and Danny, what was even crazier is we had purple and gold shorts. Yes, I remember those. <laughs> those were uh, uh those were given away, and I think maybe we had, we had to uh, make people take them. <laughs> oh, I remember I remember the game. I think it was 92, 94, and on one year they had to move it to Benton High School in the summer because right. of the renovation of Ren Lake College the last time. That's right. And I remember sitting in Benton, as you said, it was like a sauna. And I remember watching those purple and gold shirts start out nice yep. and tight, and they were sagging almost <laughs> to the ground by the time those shorts and shirts got done with that game. Well, you're exactly right. You know, when we were riding up to the to Danville yesterday, it was Mark and Pat Kern and Terry Swift and I, and we were talking, and Terry brought up about that game. He re- reminded, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe that was the year that Brian Kern played in that game uh, and, at Benton and how hot it was, and, and uh, it was some, they were laughing at how crazy they looked in those outfits. And, and uh, so we, we've gone to now you wear your home or away uniforms from your school. So it's an opportunity to wear that uniform one last time and uh, and then everybody, you know, they know you by that uniform, and right. so it works out really well. And it works out really well. I think it's a good thing that you guys do down there and have for a long time because it's easy for all-star games to go through and pick just the best players and, you know, a small number. But I think what you guys do different than anybody else, and it's a compliment, is you get players from all kinds of towns all around Southern Illinois to come out there may or may not have that chance to play in an all-star game. That's exactly right. You know, back in the day, on the on the um, the drive, this, this is how they used to pick the players on the drive to the um, uh, Illinois Basketball Coaches Association meeting in Bloomington. Rich, Ron Heron, Brad Weathers, and Dick Corn were in a car with a clipboard, and they and, that, and they came up with the players. And you had to be all South, all Conference, all State, all World, or whatever, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And but what we did is we took that and we expanded it to now you got to be all Conference, all State, all whatever and also we got to like you and so we threw that in there we got to like you and that's where we came up with 45 different schools and checking out with conferences and coaches and broadcasters and saying hey is there anybody out there senior boy or girl nice player give them an opportunity to play one more time and uh, so that's kind of how we've expanded it and i haven't heard any flack from anyone that says hey you know why'd you pick so-and-so what's that person doing playing i mean all we hear are, uh from kids Parents, coaches, and basketball junkies. Hey, thanks for um, you know allowing these guys to come together one last time. And, yet, and the other thing that's really neat is that uh, you know people come playing from different conferences that have never ever been on the floor. You know, Drone's going to get to play with uh, somebody from the South Seven or someone from one of the other conferences. 
the uh, at Black Diamond River to River, whatever, and those guys never got to play together. And uh, so that's what's really neat. Hey, speaking of what's really neat is our WMI Sports Social Media Question of the Week, and this week's question to you is, who is your pick to win the men's basketball tournament in the NCAA Division I? Huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Harvard. Harvard. Okay. I can handle that. Yeah. Travis told me that my son Travis said that uh, Jeremy Lynn uh, never tweets anybody, but uh, finally I guess they gave him enough flack the other night. He tweeted back after uh, all the people that tweet him after, after Harvard won. But uh, I'm always for the underdog. Unless my team isn't the underdog, <laughs> right? That's yeah. But uh, uh, but anyways. Hey, run yeah. through those run through those times, those games again next sure. Friday in admission, everything for all our listeners. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that again. Red Lake College this Friday night, 29th. Uh, the girls' game is at six o'clock. The guys' game is at eight o'clock. There'll be a three-point shootout. There'll be a dunk contest. We'll give away MVP awards, and we'd love to have anyone come out. We've got uh, five bucks to get in. All the proceeds go to the Lions Club. And have a great time and love to have you there. Hey, thanks, Dave. We'd love to have you on the show. Thanks for being on and promoting that great All Star Games coming up. Thank you, Danny, very much. I appreciate it. And go Warriors. Hey, no kidding. Go Warriors. No doubt about that. Thanks, Dave, for being on. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. That's Dave Severn. He, of course, is coordinator of the Lions Club All Star Games. It'll happen next Friday night at Rin Lake College. High school girls, high school boys games, dunk contest, three point contest. It's a great night of activity for all those kids that are playing. One final game, maybe, of their high school basketball career. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll roll out to the end of the show in the final 15 minutes. We'll talk about our social media question of the week. We'll talk about some other things going on, the NCAA tournament, MLB baseball around the corner as well. We'll do all that here and after the break on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. The calendar has turned to a new year, but we still have an amazing deal on a 2012 Ford F-250 Super Duty pickup. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer, Ford Square, Mount Vernon. We have a beautiful black F-250 Super Duty 4x4 crew cab ready to work for you. And when you finance through Ford Motor Credit, you'll save $2,000 plus three payments on us. That's a $3,500 in total savings. With the preferred equipment package and snowplow package, this is the perfect truck on the job and on the farm. Speaking of, if you're a Farm Bureau member, ask how you can save an additional $500. Come see one of our sales associates today and save big on a new 2012 Ford F-250 Super Duty at Ford Square, Mount Vernon, 1501 Broadway, in Mount Vernon, Illinois, and online at FordSquare.com or find us on Facebook. Saturday Sports Show in its last 15 minutes, of course, is brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospitals, more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Danny Sarwinski with Mike Richardson, Jeff Crow, Chris Hugo alongside, and we roll into the last 15 minutes. Rams baseball today on the AM, which is right here. Also online at WMikesports.com, pregame at 1245, a doubleheader starting at 1 with Mattoon or Mattoon or Mattoon, depending on the weather bulletin pronunciation. Whatever the case may be, Mattoon, Mattoon is getting a lot of snow for March. The W Mike Sports social media question of the week. You can find it at facebook.com slash Sports. We've already had some people listed some answers. And this week's question is, who's your pick to win the NCAA men's basketball tournament? I have just a casual watcher this year, therefore I have no pick. Do either of you guys have a pick? Oh, I always fill out a bracket. It's it's a it's a must. It's it's a have to situation. I just I just do the uh, basically the eye test. You can listen to all the people. that's a lot smarter. You can get all the extra information you need. Everybody's got an opinion. It's just like a pocket on a shirt. But um, what Louisville did to Syracuse in that championship game in the Big East was rather impressive and. 
Um, always been a big Rick Patino fan. That's my second team ever in high school or in college. Naturally, um, Denny Crum. After he left, after he left uh, L.A., got a couple championships there too. So I got Louisville over Miami in the championship. Yeah, sorry. you're okay, Blue. Yeah, that's all right. Boy, that name, you, you know. know, somebody has to tell Louisville they can hang banners after the '80s. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Well, Denny Crum's not there now. Um, Chris, you know, so yeah, be out of there. yeah. Well, same difference. Uh, Chris Hugo says Ohio State is who he's looking at. Mr. Crow, do you have a pick, or are you just out and about? He's out and about. So, well, there's a lot of. I mean, naturally, because of Illinois, there's a lot of uh, Big Ten interest. Yeah. The, the The problem with the Big Ten is, and you've seen it several years. Mm-hmm. You beat and bang, and everybody takes a lot of pride in that being the roughest conference, and yeah, you know. But you know, you don't get all those same officials in the NCAA tournament. You you know you don't. Yeah. You're not allowed to beat and bang all the time. Uh, yeah. I think. Wisconsin might have found that out last night. I'm not going to root for any particular team, people that are texting me. I am just going to be a casual observer. My whole entertainment is mainly at halftime if Charles Barkley and EJ and Kenny the Jet Smith are on because that's entertainment. That's extra fun for me getting ready for the NBA playoffs, but I'm not going to be rooting for any particular team, anything different. I'm just a casual fan this year. I like uh, I like Michigan State in these scenarios. I, I think Tom Izzo is just about as good as it gets. Uh, for tournament time, I enjoy watching him coach. Um, might have a little bit of interest in Florida this year. That could be uh, possibly a, a coach moving on to a Western University that I'm pretty familiar with. Who so, are you talking uh, about? Wait a minute. What you, a little what? rumor mill going on out there. Oh, okay. So let which so we'll talk a little basketball here. So uh, so you're talking about UCLA? Yes. Are you wanting? Are you wanting? No, oh, what's his face from Pittsburgh? Is that who you're after? No, 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 no. Florida. Donovan. No, maybe, he, maybe, why would he leave? May, what else has he got to do down there? He's been there, getting close. How, you know how long he's been there? He's the longest tenured coach in the SEC. I think this is your eight. I have to sit here and watch him do a UPS commercial with a guy on his <laughs> left that talks that couldn't coach at Arkansas. That's he true. was a Kentucky guy. He played at Kentucky. I can't say nothing. He was on the Unforgettable John Pelfrey, but. I, he can sit down there. Florida football's above him. He's stealing money down there at Florida. I don't. I don't think he would uproot and go to. That's. Um, I think it's just part of the the challenge aspect of it. Pittsburgh's uh, guy's rumored for a job too. Yeah, been there, done that. Uh, Here, and nothing yeah. against Holland. I mean, we right. talked off the air, and right. I mean, I've got a lot of UCLA friends that's been hot the last twelve hours, um, but. It's uh, Ben Holland is just not comfortable with the one and done scenario that's taking place in college basketball right, right now, um, because in a high academic school like that, if you're losing potential recruits because these are good kids, but you get a chance to get quote the star, and then now you get stabbed in the back, and it's going to be a one and done type deal, that that's put your program back. And that's happened the last six or seven years after that three straight years of mm-hmm. the run in the Final Four when he was allowed to keep kids two and three years. That was a total different scenario. I just don't think he's been real comfortable in this scenario, and I, I think Guerrero will have to look stay, take a step back. And um, I mean, Ben Holland's been there 10 years, uh, a nice run, but I, I think the, right now these rules uh, just, just are not setting well with him. I, I don't like the one and duns. My coach is the king of one and duns, Coach Cal. We got nice one and duns coming in next year. Um, it is what it is until they make it a two year rule, which I think it should be. Then you're never going to get it. either make make it a two year rule and let them go to co- pros if they want to. I'm tired of holding them back. Um, I, you got to be careful picking a hot coach in a tournament because hot coaches in tournaments usually don't seem to keep that up. But uh, again, it, it's been an interesting tournament. Georgetown figures out a way to lose again. Um, Notre you look, Dame did the same thing. They're the two notorious. Who is Georgetown and Notre Dame? Oh, Notre Dame. Uh, Mike Bray. How does Mike Bray stay at Notre Dame other than the football program allegedly carries that university? But you know, you got the same guys that do the same things every year. Uh, here's another one. I'll throw this one out. This might step on toes too. Phase one of the destruction of a program beginning in Manhattan, Kansas, has been completed. As Kansas State loses in the first round, Bruce Weber out there again. Now it'll be time before Frank Martin's guys are gone and we get into the 
downfall of the Kansas State program. Absolutely. It's going to happen. Well, it, it, this always is just it's just such a fun time of year. These these two consecutive weekends and, and you know the extended weekends when you start on Thursdays. Um, I I think personally for me, I thought it was just a little disrespectful, and, and UCLA didn't help themselves by laying the egg last night, but. Oh. Oregon, their seed, I thought was ridiculously horrible. Uh, that's that's a good basketball team. Now they they uh, they've got a tough task ahead of them, you know, when they play St. Louis. And St. Louis is getting a lot of love from a lot of the the hierarchy as well. And and they they should. It's it's a good pro. But you know, we've had a lot of guests on today, and yeah. also people like to talk about quote the underdogs. But really, when you start looking at this. You're you're naming some of these underdog teams, but look at their rosters. Right, these guys some have some five year seniors. These cats are twenty three years old. So oh, far. now wait a and, minute. And I'm telling, oh, yeah, I, I, we're, don't we're you start on that. that. No, yeah, no, no. Le- legitimately, because yeah. you can. You have the five year seniors. Yeah, uh, but the underdog classes now, your Butlers, uh, your St. Louis U guys. Mm-hmm. These guys are not the one and done. These guys hang around the university, and they're going to be juniors and seniors on these teams. When you put that group together, sure, you can have some run. Look like what Butler's done the last few years. VCU, juniors and seniors on that team. Uh, so I don't know that really the, the underdogs, um, can you really call them that anymore? Look at the 15 twos that, that went with Georgetown going down. Uh, I just think these basketball teams are being developed now. And if you still want to use the old terminology of a mid-major, check the roster. Check and see how many seniors, how many people's been in that program for all these years. UCLA's problem is time flies. Time flies, I guess. Shabazz forgot how old he was. Oh, I'm 20 now. I, I need to, okay, yeah. That he, he that is, it, it amazed me last year at this time how quickly a number of teams all of a sudden got spooked and ran off away from him, including mine. All of a sudden, just that was it. Here's here's the thing you got to look at too when you talk about one and duns. As I saw this year, if you don't get a group of one and duns that aren't selfish and worried about themselves, it's trouble. And you have run into that. Kentucky Absolutely. ran into it. Totally. the way the system is and the way Coach Cal does it. You're going to get a group every so often that won't get in. That's just part of the deal when you're recruiting one and duns. I don't want him to stop recruiting one and duns because if we don't have one and duns, we're not going to be able to compete where we need to compete at. That's well, me. And, and I think now more and more is coming out, and now they broke the story last night about Shabazz and now being a year older. But uh, also the blogs were pretty hot and heavy out west that one of the decisions that Shabazz made of going to UCLA instead of looking to go to a Duke or somebody else is now the selfishness does come out and basically saying, well, I wanted to go there because they had just young talent and I could probably be a bigger star in the puddle as then being a role mm-hmm. player with a good team and trying to win. So well, now, if you say those things, boys, i said say it a million times. I'll help you pack your suitcase, and I'll get you to the NBA draft if that's where you want to go because as far as I'm – you're done. That's, yep. that's not UCLA way. That's not basketball way. That's not coaching way. I mean, if you're that selfish, you're right. Your next step is the NBA. Adios. Uh, see you later, Sonara. I've got a couple of guys I'd like to help pack out Lexington, too, maybe three or four. But anyway, and that tournament goes on. I think the best thing now that they have done is the ability to put the games on all four channels because used to you got to 4 o'clock, you'd miss a game because they'd switch off or you can only watch back in the day. Channel 12 and Channel 4, that's it, can't watch anything else. And sometimes it had the same game on. So it's nice to be able to see all four games and switch back and forth and see everything you need to see. Hey, speaking of switch, and we got a couple minutes yeah, right here. Switch. I was able to watch uh, online, actually watch the finals of 3A and 4A basketball over the weekend. But on satellite, I was flipping around. I caught some uh, California girls action, yeah. caught Missouri yeah. boys and girls. But I caught Indiana boys. Yes. Now, we're all pretty intelligent people in this room. I'd and say we've we seen are. a lot of basketball. Well, two out of three, I was. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, seen a lot of basketball, heard a lot of nicknames. I heard a nickname the other day I don't think I have ever heard from, and it was from an Indiana school. It's a high school by Indianapolis, and the school name, it's Speedway is the town and the school. Right. 
Do you know what their nickname happens to be? Racers? No. On that same line, the spark plugs. That's awesome. I've never heard uh, anybody. That may be one of the all-time favorite nicknames I've ever heard. The spark plugs. Wow. See, I didn't heard of that. Me neither. That's a good idea. Very neat. To go around it goes with along it. with the Indy, you know, and the racing and everything. The spark you know, plugs. I'm still waiting for Bigfoot and Sasquatch nicknames to come around. Cause we got to find, hey, find one and get him named. That's the big the main show thing. is recorded tomorrow night. They actually went to Madison County, Illinois. That's really? where the show's at tomorrow night. Wow. I, 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 I have a program right over so the under. Miss it. Oh, my Off goodness. Off the river. I mean, good locations. I work over there quite a bit. Hey. Uh, I'm not tall enough, obviously. But Hey, uh, no. Neither am I. But, hey, I'll be investigating now. Yep. Over there a little bit more. You got in Madison, Illinois. Awesome. Madison County, Illinois. Man, can't wait. That's right, tomorrow night. Okay, yeah. Well, we've can't gotten wait. way off the track here. We're everything else. And. We want to thank all of our guests today for joining the Saturday Sports Show. Tim Holloway, Lance Bolt, Brett Blondie, Tim Kraft, Greg Alvis, Randy House, Dave Severin for all being on with us as we cover the round the world of Southern Illinois sports from high school baseball to softball to basketball and the college level. We wish Red Lake College men's basketball team the best of luck tonight in their national championship game against Moraine Valley, 7.30 at Danville. We know there's a lot of people going to head up, wear your red and black tonight, especially red. Cheer on that team and bring back that national championship to Southern Illinois. We have Rams baseball on the day right here on AM 940 as well as online at WMIXports.com. They'll host Mattoon at 1 p.m. At Brendan Klein Field, looking forward to that doubleheader. Rams looking to get back on track after a couple tough losses this week to Waterloo and Triad. Chris Hugo and I will be on here about 12:45 at the pregame from Brendan Klein Field. Doubleheader action: the Rams against Mattoon. Of course, next week it's a full schedule of Rams baseball. Next week, 4:30 starts. Benton in on Monday. It's Effingham on the road on Tuesday. That'll be weather permitting with the snow that Effingham's going to get uh, tomorrow and tomorrow night. On Wednesday, it's Lombard and Montini at home at 4.30. On Thursday, it's Altoff at home at 4.30. On Friday, it's Ducoin at home at 4.30. All those games with 4.15 pregames on AM 940, online at WMIXSports.com. First pitch at 4.30. Remember, we're on Twitter, at WMIXSports. A great way to follow us there and find out information. Thanks to all of our followers there, 779 of them, by the way. We'd love to have more of you. If you're already a follower, tell all your Twitter buddies about us at WMIX Sports. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. Our question of the week is posted there. Who is your pick to win the NCAA tournament? Of course, that will go on this weekend, next weekend, and the Final Four will wrap up in two weeks. The Masters coming up. MLB baseball starts next weekend. Thank goodness. Something to watch during the week at night. NBA playoffs around the corner, NASCAR in full gear. It's a busy time of year as we roll in. You can always keep up on our broadcast schedules here on our website, WMIXports.com. It's still relatively new. It's been around for a while, WMIXports.com. We have scores, schedules, highlights. We have archives of both audio and video games, everything you can find there at WMIXports. Dot com. It's been a great day. Thanks to all our help from Reese Barnfield to Chris Hugo for Jeff Crow pushing the buttons for Mike Richardson. I'm Denny Zerwinski. Rams baseball will be on in about two hours and 45 minutes with the. You're listening. Thanks for listening to Saturday Sports Show. NBC News starts now.